And so last week, I think it seemed as if we were joking about Red Grant becoming the mayor of D.C. But I do believe we gave some highly uh, opinionated opinions on our thoughts of the state of D.C. What I forgot to say was the reason why Red Grant wasn't on this ballot, I mean the primary, no, the general, no, the primary election is because I believe he's not a sitting member or something like that. So basically he's running that. The independent. Yeah. Not really Democrat. He's, he's, he's claiming Democrat, but he's, in order for him to get on the ballot, he had to be. Yeah, uh, write his name in. And she goes, <laughs> ain't nobody say anything about her saying that, but I want to make sure y'all know it was the wife that said that, it wasn't me. I did say it. Even though she was at that comedy fundraiser just like I was. Yeah. And she and heard he had everything that $2,000 he had to say. Hey, but look, I, I did not leave that comedy show thinking there would be a part two to it. So supposedly the part two was better than part one. Hmm. He might have got ten dollars from you. Hmm. Outside, it was a good show. Yeah, it was, and like his points and things were valid. Paying the teachers, building up the community, using the abandoned buildings to actually house the homeless instead of them being on the streets. He, I mean, he had some good points. I just don't think he has the credibility in the politics political aspect for people to like really want to take him serious because they like what he's a comedian how you can go from a comedian to a politician but i mean you can do anything and that's what he chose to do was to come back and help his community yeah if trump could become president and not really a, a career politician i think that doesn't matter, but with DC people, what I've learned is we are we are a fickle bunch. So folks are more accustomed to go with what they're comfortable with versus someone that they really don't know why he's doing it at this point. Cause change ain't something that just we just saw over the last year. We've been fighting for statehood for like the last four mayors. So like just to get the recognition as a state, you feel me? Like that, I, I don't know, like the taxes, I guess, would change. You know, a lot of folks talk about the low income and medium income folks in DC, then it's gonna probably be either you rich or you poor if we become a state, so. I mean, that's what it is now. Yeah, so you, you damned if you do. Damned if you don't. Damn, damn, damn. So, of course, we saw last, this happened in the middle of us recording the last episode. Like, we knew they was going to strike it down a few days before, but I didn't really want to touch on it until we, like, I knew, like, the full outcome. And this doesn't affect, well, it should affect everyone, but it, takes the power, it takes the power away from the woman, the Roe versus Wade. So I'm gonna get a flow to my wife. We've, we've experienced the abortion. And just in my opinion, looking back 12 years ago, 13 years ago when this happened, just imagine if, Alex, you know, just imagine if, uh, Calls 10, so might be longer than that. But Man, we have a 16 year old. Okay, well, 16 years ago. Damn. Right. Damn, my both. Right. <laughs> we be having a sweet 16. But we wasn't we wasn't mature enough. We wasn't we wasn't in the right space to be having a child. And I just think, of course, you, you just would have to learn, of course, like everything. But, um, hey, I let my wife talk about it. So what do you think if you didn't have the power to make the decision at that 
at that point about the baby? How how would it have changed your life if they I, took that choice away? I mean, I had no choice but to have my kid and figure it out. There's no handbook on being a parent. But I just think it's not fair for these wrinkled ass pink mole rats to tell a woman what she can and can't do with her body. Because there are situations and instances where a woman has no choice but to have an abortion. Because it's either having an abortion or going to deep depression, kill the kid, kill themselves. All because the kid reminds them of a traumatic situation. Yeah, they say you can have the child and give it up for adoption. But do they, they don't understand. Men don't understand what women go through when you have a child. Or the motherly instance that you get once your child is born and they hand you your child. Some people say they don't get that instance. But then you have those who, as soon as they place that child on you, it's like, it's no longer about me. It's about this kid. I got to do what's best for this kid. So just imagine if you were raped and you got pregnant and you can't have an abortion. And then you got to look at this child that reminds you of the person that raped you. You're going to, people in instance will resent that child. Then you're going to have people saying child abuse because you're beating the kid because the kid looked like the person that did something to you. Or you're neglecting the child. I mean, nobody wants a child in the system. Of course not. But what about women having rights to something? Already don't want to pay us. Already don't want us to be bosses. Already don't want us in political aspects to be anything president vice president nothing and here it is you gonna take away our right to our body that's just messed up next is okay already gonna limit the plan b i'm about to stock up and sell them joints next is gonna be birth control they're gonna start telling the doctors they can't give you birth control then here it is all these men and vasectomies that's going to be the only thing that's going to slow it down is men getting vasectomies or one of these political high-ranking naked mole rats that's got their side piece she getting knocked up and she ready to ruin his life then all of a sudden he going to be like uh-uh we got to reverse this because that's all it's going to take is somebody in a higher rank to get caught up and they'll be like, no, go here. You can get an abortion in. No. I live here. And it's illegal. You go, I play it against them. But it's just, I just think it's disrespectful and messed up. If you can't birth a child on your own, how the hell are you going to tell somebody else who can? Yeah. I was listening to somebody yesterday at work. And they said, what's, what's crazy, what's really crazy is Caucasians lead. They they rate highest in abortions more than any other race. So you would think, right, that um man, it's all about power, but you gotta know like anything, folks gonna find a way. Oh yeah. yeah. Of course. And that's the that's the sad part. It's gonna go back to the underground, knocking on the door three times, password. Getting your abortion in the basement. <laughs> yeah. That's um because then they're gonna penalize the doctors if they do them. What? Or if they or if they court doing. Yeah. Because again, like you said. Because you got a bill for it. Yeah. Definitely got a bill for it. Or cash money. But a lot of folks ain't coming out of pocket for abortions because it was was a legal situation, right? But man, love. How much you pay for abortion? Yeah, pay for it. Like billing, like. like I mean, because they need utensils, they're going to need. Oh, yeah. You got to have it. So if they say you can't do abortions, you eventually going to have to 
discontinue the stuff that you have. You're never going to be able to get the updated sterile stuff that you need. The vacuum and the replacements and all that. Yeah. Well, last week, we, we did something. Well, I did something. What should be going on? I think this boss from the Oh I'm 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 so sorry. I wasn't stuck in the middle. I right, look we I can't stop this without the hook. I definitely can't stop it. Mario, he let me know. Oh, what I, I'm sorry. That's what I'm I I'm needed. so sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, you got to tap it. That's you. There you go. <laughs> Man, we <laughs> I went into that situation. So last week you versus for the people who didn't tune in, you missed the show. And that's exactly what it was. It was it was uh the underdog versus someone who thought they can just come to the show with their hits. And they wasn't seeing the direction that versus is going to. Now it used to be like you can come with your your best ten or twenty and you good. But as soon as outside opening, they open, there's a there's a performing aspect. And like, listen, they need to start like coming up with like a sports betting system for these shows. <laughs> because like we would have all lost our money. Uh -huh. and, and whoever would have been, been Mario for me. Whoever would have said Mario would have been rich. Me. Cause, Cause like, man, listen. <laughs> First of all, I've never seen somebody bring out so many props. My, I, I didn't, I didn't even think in my mind that he would bring out B2K. He didn't bring them out, but he sure tried to. And if they were available, <laughs> he'd have brought them out. That man had a whole oh. carpet section. Listen, and no disrespect to his brother. They were some clowns with that dag on watermelon. Y'all should, should have kept it's the enough. watermelon. You it's should, enough. And if that's told, how they eat the box. You should have told your brother. It's enough. You should have told Amario that you didn't believe this was the best idea. It's enough. Because it didn't work. I was watching my wife the whole time, but she was she was a little high. And it didn't it didn't it didn't do nothing. And then it just it just looked bad. It looked like it was throwing up on the watermelon. No. And then what makes it so bad, he had the nerve to hand that watermelon to someone in the crowd for them to sit in the crowd for the next four hours with a half-eaten watermelon that he don't slob and COVID. <laughs> he did what? COVID did it. <laughs> Man, like, dude, like, come on now. I know us outside is open. But dude. <laughs> and Mario fired him up. He brought Jeremiah there. He's going to Oh Tank my God. Hey. He tried to bring Tank and all his muscles out to save him. And it still and it didn't work. work. <laughs> hey, look. <laughs> Can we get Bray in my hand? Oh, oh my God, man. Look, she just trying to keep shit on that man. <laughs> Can we get bread in my head? I mean, which one play? Icebox or... Oh! Uh, that was the drink. <laughs> this is the only hits he made. Hey, look. My man Joe Button said... Look, oh, shout out to Joe for reposting. Joe said, right. <laughs> Joe said... He knew things went bad when he brought out the white boots. <laughs> he said, I don't been to the Millennium Tour, and I know what the white boots mean. <laughs> He 
said you should have kept them white boots away. <laughs> My man changed his whole outfit. Hey. It still ain't work. I feel fine. Well, he tried. He, yeah, he look. He that's like Ray J. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Who, who, let's talk about uh, the the racist pussy man. Hey! So, let's have this conversation. Let me move my mic, sir. Now, you know she get ready to, you know she get ready to tell a lie <laughs> when she <laughs> get excited. So, let's have this, she started talking like that, let's have this conversation. Go on. What do you think about a lie? My husband is a pussy racist. Like I said, so yeah. women, if you don't get a Brazilian, I don't know why not, but <laughs> set the scene. Set the scene. Don't use my shit. It's your show. It's your show. So I gotta use shit your my, shit. No shit. And no. stuff. But, but whatever. So I can go. You get your Brazilian. It's normally four to six weeks before you go back. I can go six to ten. But in the mess, so much was going on. My wax lady went out of town. Cheating on your wax lady is like cheating on your barber. You don't do it. So, I grew some hair. You can tell Almost finished. the difference <laughs> in this Negro when it's a little bit of hair down there. He just seems real iffy. Brushed by. He didn't quit his type of situation. As soon as it's a fresh Brazilian, you can't keep this mofo away. Am I lying? She told me some I smell sweet pussy. Huh. The disrespect. But when it was some peach fuzz down there, this mofo tied. Everything under the sun to do. <laughs> but the pussy. So I know. <laughs> But no, he is a pussy racist now. The way he treated with a little hair compared to no hair. Yeah. Man, y'all believe what y'all want to believe. I might be. I never thought about it. I never really looked at it like that. I might. You it, might? Yeah, it might be. It might be the case. You know, so, I, when, so what did you do when you found out that I had a... I might a be a little bit. What happened when you saw... I might be a little bit. No, no, no. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Can't trust Michael. He iffy. <laughs> hey, but no, but hey, look. It, I never what happened? Really, what? When you, when you noticed I had a wax, what happened? <laughs> I didn't even notice it. I smelled it. And what happened? <laughs> she told me I couldn't do nothing because I had to wait a day. She saying this because. But listen, you saw, you see his face and how he acted. Oh, it ain't gonna shit. work now. Oh. Because I said he had to wait. <laughs> see that? But before I went and got done, he wasn't thinking about it. First of all, she acted like she had just came off. She made it seem like she was like days into her come off. I know how to vibe it. It's like she go every six to eight weeks, six to ten weeks, whatever she said, weeks, right? And it's normally a day or two after she comes off. So I had already counted that because I had been. But before I, I came on, sir, can, can I get my? Because I missed I a week myself. and a half. Look. So for the whole entire six or whatever weeks, I stand in the end up. That is uh, the truth. Right? Uh, Look, she, uh, she always started. Really? She, what you tell me that what you tell me the other night? What I say. Yeah, she can't even uh she can't even say it with a straight face. Trying to act like she don't know what I'm talking about. Oh. <sighs> God, how good it was. <laughs> oh I remember, so you gotta do it again. Tell you, man, niggas be thinking like, oh, no, what, man? 
Be faking, man. So your boy Carson Daly said, how 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 the story go, boo? You read it. Oh, that him and his wife got a sleeping divorce, and then it turned into a sleeping separation. So they realized that they wasn't getting the proper sleep while sleeping in the same bed together. Ooh, that was sexy. So they decided to sleep in separate beds and realized they was getting more sleep and more rest and so forth, sleeping separately. Then they decided to do a sleeping separation, which was sleeping in the same bed, but different blankets. Carson Daly had sleep apnea, I believe, so mm -hmm. the, the machine, machine probably played, played a major role. <laughs> Into why they had to have that that sleep sleep divorce. Man, I can't go too long without sleeping next to her. It's it's a certain like why when her the thermostat on her heater like goes over a hundred. Yeah, that's that's when I gotta like I gotta push away. Like once she get into a deep sleep, that heat combustion just builds. Like and my daughter has that same heater. That's why they at four, like, like the, the heat is at a, it's oh my god. Anywho, so I couldn't, I couldn't imagine myself going years sleeping in separate rooms every now and then, like, and she can't deal with it either. Like, even if I explain to her the reason why I didn't sleep in the bed, that's not good enough for her. So, she she feels the same way. Because during COVID, that wasn't good. I didn't like it. I had fun. She says she had fun. But every time I couldn't come downstairs, but I came to the door, she had something sexy on trying to entice me to come catch COVID with her. <laughs> so, she got, she. But did you come downstairs? Yes, I did. <laughs> Remember I told you to keep your head inside the house and stick your booty out the back door and we did it right there? Yeah. I did. The disrespect. And she took it. <laughs> and I did. That hole, that hole that she ended up getting into the back of that dress is still there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. She said, oh. She was like, what if your what if your penis get told? So be it. I ain't nothing I can do for him. He on his own. <laughs> we have to quarantine him. <laughs> You know right. All right, so look, it's it's look. How, how do you feel about this? What do you think the percentage is on the man and female's ego? Men have big egos, yeah, very big, because they're when it comes to like asking for stuff or biggest thing is asking for stuff. You ain't got no man that's gonna ask. For stuff, they gonna try to figure out how how to go get it on their own, and yeah, sit in it. Also talking, I, I I'm also talking to the aspect as far as like uh, men um, saluting my saluting people. Like man, if I if I like your fit, man, I see you. You know, like me, I I welcome people. Especially people I haven't seen in a while. If I see them, I'll be like, man, my 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 greatest compliment, and, and this is not gay, is man, damn, I see you. Man, I see you doing that thing. And that's that's something that just comes naturally, right? My ego comes into play when like I can't when I wanted to accomplish something and I probably should have asked for help. I, it takes me to like I have to go to the breaking point, right? Until like I I gotta ask that help. I mean I'm getting better at it, but there's still times where like I'm just left not about to burden her with my problems. So I just be like, you know what? I'm just gonna just keep it. And it shows in other aspects. Yeah. So like instead of me getting it three full times. Yeah, I'll wait till it builds up. Twice a week. This nigga put me on one two day punishment. So I 
So what the hell are you talking about? You and your ego and how it takes away from my bedroom action. <laughs> Y'all should lie, man. That, that ain't been like that in a while, man. What is she talking about? Anywho, man. Uh, yeah, but man, men, men have a real problem with like bigging people up. That also falls in the line. While like, I'm not gonna say we struggle to get head as black men, cause like I, I like I do a lot of sitting back and observing. And even with myself, in my current situation, I have to sometimes remind myself that um, I I play a role in this. And I have to get out of that, that, that mindset that, like, I can't be replaced, right? I think... You uh, can't be replaced? Yeah, like that mentality where I think I'm so good at my job that can't somebody come behind me and do better. That's what I mean. Anybody can be replaced. Yeah. <laughs> but you find, you find you find you find that you know, consistently like we boy, if we would scratch each other's back every now and then, man, you'd be surprised how far we can go. Right? Cuz I was talking to somebody not too long ago about and again, like I'm stay I stay like trying to like help people out and talk to them and just Give them uh, quotes about how like I got through something myself, and you know, and I I would also like for every now and then that to come. And I actually met somebody that's real cool, man. Every time I'm at work, we we chop it up, and he always sprinkling some stuff to me. Alex, <laughs> we almost done. Stop, girl. <laughs> He always sprinkling something to me just to show me that, like, not that I'm, I am that dude, but like, you are yeah, somebody dude. basically. And um, you know, every now and then it'll be nice to get that pat on their back, you know, without having to tell somebody something. But I, I, what was my point? I had a point. I had a point. Oh yeah, I was giving somebody some tips about like how to better advance their business from a marketing standpoint, right? And Every time I see this person, I'm making sure like I'm sprinkling some extra, like just sprinkling some extra to the situation, and just to just to get like one thing I I know about this generation we was blessed with was the like the power of technology, like technology is technology that like knowing how to work your phone well and do all that extra. Cause my grandmother she doesn't know how to work a phone. Right, and in so many words, that generation, that generation, maybe two or three years behind her, or four years behind her, some of them struggle with that same thing. So I was like, man, you know, now without getting in, not without trying not to get too much into his business, like basically, I was like, man, you need to like get away from them, those hand to hand transactions because trying to to rely on someone else to get you back your investment plus giving you more tools to be able to survive on your investment it's just it's just not possible in this day and age you know the reason i said Especially it was, when people want discounts yeah because somebody called me yesterday like man you got discounts on your store yeah i'm like they come every every month there's a discount either free shipping Either percentages off. Oh, you can't get the prices? No, nah, I can't. My prices are my prices. If you don't want to deal with it, man, your support, it's okay. I'll be all right. I, I hustle too hard. So, like, I know the work that I put in. I'm going to get this podcast out of my business out of whatever I'm trying to do. But, yeah, get away from that because, like, you're going to stay, you're going to stay sitting back. Like, it, uh, the what ifs. And, and every time I see him, it's the what if. And I'm like, you know, the best way to get away from it is putting all your merchandise online, right? And rely, your prices be your prices. And if you want to decide whenever you're going to get these discounts out, you can. But don't don't belittle yourself and don't, belittle, don't, don't you know, don't shit yourself. 
because you got you got quality material, you got great design, and you got great worth ethic. So it's gonna it's gonna come back. See him next time. He asked me the same thing I had already told him about. I'm like, okay, so you wasn't listening, right? So I mean, it's cool. And then every time I talk to this person, it's like, man, how's the podcast doing? And I, I almost want to be like, nigga, you would know if he was listening. So, like, people tell you, like, what's important. And the one thing I've been trying so, so hard, especially over these last two years, because the pandemic, it did, it did something to, like, the mindset. And it's just not me, just everybody. Like, you got to, you got to, you almost got to, like, care about the people who care about you, right? Because, like... You find, you find, like, like I, I used to say on social media all the time, I don't play the social media game. Like, when you know me, you know me. So, like, we can have those conversations outside of doing the social media thing. But, like, you, what I've learned over this last two years, you, you know, we losing people. You, you, you got to love the people who love you. And, like, when they don't, when they don't love you, it, it don't cost nothing. Right, it don't cost it don't cost nothing for you to show support to somebody, right? It, it don't it don't cost nothing for you to just you know hit the like or be like, man, yeah, I appreciate it or X, Y, and Z, this and that. But but I found over these last two years is I had to learn how to separate business and separate personal. I I never want to let the business side of my business and the lack thereof the support to affect who I know personally, people that I know personally, whether they support it or they don't, because I know what I give, I know I know my the mindset that I give, I know the verbiage. I'm the only giving what I went through, right? And and I and I get emotional sometimes because like it's not easy. Like, you know, I'm always in my mind and most times it's not even about me. It's just like and how how I can support how can I support my kids this way, or like how can I add an extra two or three more water parks in a year, right? Where I can get this money from to make sure, you know, X, Y, and Z, this is gonna happen. So like it's a it's a constant struggle every now and then. But I I will say this on some real like if my friends watch, man, check on me, dog. Like it'll be nice to just hear from y'all, man, because. You know, I, I see the way, I see how people move. I see the way it move, and, and, and sometimes I'll be sitting back and I'll be like, man, that shit look weak, right? But but I, I got to also understand that, you know, it's a personal side and there's a business side. And one thing I learned in the business part of it, everybody ain't going to like what you're doing. And that's okay, right? But when you become friends... And you you consider somebody your brother and your family, it don't cost nothing. It don't cost a dime, but the just the support. I, I said it, man. You got ten friends, you got a thousand followers. Whether you like it, somebody in your thousand will. You don't understand how that listen can change my family, cause it ain't about me. I see the numbers I can get when things going well. I know what I can do, and it don't cost much, right? But this is my grind, this is my investment, I do it for my family, and I want to stay motivating people in the same token, because it ain't easy. Like, man, this this life is not easy, though. You have so many demons on a daily basis trying to attack and trying to waver you and trying to stop your grind. But I'm telling you, man, when you're inspired, when you dedicated, when you focus, when you inspire daily. One thing I was telling somebody, man, because she was constantly coming to work with a with a, a frown on her face and just looking angry. I said, man, sometimes you just gotta go in that bathroom, man, after you wash your face and just smile at yourself. Cause if you smile at yourself, man, you'll take that same look, right? And you'll take it out, man. You don't understand who you can bless with just a smile. Right? I don't care how hard my day is going, man, when I check in, I, I got to make sure I'm smiling. Because, man, if I sit and mope all freaking day, if I sit and worry all day, because I don't worry at all. I stress, but I don't worry. 
I don't worry. The reason I don't worry is because I, I got faith. I got my family. Man, I'm telling you, these three, man, they, they get me through some of the darkest days. They don't even understand it sometimes. Like even yesterday, I was tired as hell. But I was, man, I was dedicated to watching that movie with my son. Because I wanted to. And they don't understand how much I appreciate them. Because I don't know where I would be at without them. But I didn't mean to like take this rant like that. I just know, man, what support looked like. And, and, went, and this was based off of the ego thing. That's why I say, like, man, we like 85% ego. And women, they got that little 25. When they want their way, when they want to do things their way, that's when their ego. But you see the way women support each other versus the way men. And I said, I was saying to somebody else, once you get on the, the opposite side of like using social media as like a show me tool and you trying to use, you know, mo find a way to monetize your thoughts and all that, you start seeing like the, the real and the fake of social media. Like I get a backdoor look at like some of the bullshit I see from y'all. That shit is crazy, dog. I'm telling you, man. The algorithm is crazy, too. That's why I really be thinking they be in your mind sometimes. Because you get on that joint, you just the first thing they want to show you is a bunch of corny shit to make you want to dislike your friends. Like, literally, it be like cornball and stuff. And I'll be like, man, is this really what this is? Like, do I really know this person? So that's why I say, like, the ego thing, that shit real, man. Motherfuckers can hate you so, they can dislike what you're doing so much that they'll big up somebody doing the same exact shit you're doing. And social media will, will just put that in your face all because they think, they just think, they make us hate each other, dog. And that shit is crazy. That's why, like, I text people, man, you got my number. You know, I remember back in the day when my number changed like every every 14 days because I, I was a prepaid in that line. But like, I've been blessed to be able to keep my phone on and my number's been the same. The same, dog. So like, folks, when you know a person's number, just chop it up, text them. But you know how that ego shit go. Mother's Day, motherfucking mothers is telling all the mothers. The, the girls, they telling everybody. Birthdays come around, no problem. These motherfuckers throwing parties for each other. Men, man, if you ain't trying to like shake your dick on a girl's butt or twerk or be in a strip club somewhere or drinking on the corner or snorting something or something, man, like we ain't cool. You gotta be, you gotta be sitting there getting ready to get into some shit to be cool with somebody. Motherfucker, more cool with motherfuckers who doing dirt. Than being cool with positivity. Like, this shit crazy. But I mean, that's where growth comes in. If you see y'all not on the same level, it's nothing wrong with, you know. And I thought that. Like, I get the, I get the fact people, like, outgrow. Like, everybody outgrow each other. But, like, you would think, dog. Like, like for instance, man. You know, I hate when I, like, find all my friends lie to me. Blatantly lie to me. Like, shit crazy. Bro, I'm like, man, why you, why you, why you, where you at? And Slim like, man, cause such and such this. And I get a call like two days later and it was such and such that. And I tell you off, Ed. But like, just stuff like that. I'm not about to judge nobody. Cause like, my slate ain't clean. Like, I, man, I don't, <laughs> my slate ain't clean at all. Like, I am not living the best life. I just work hard to provide. We work hard to provide, man. And sometimes we go without to make sure that our kids have. Like, that's all we doing. But, like, folks gonna know. Like, it is what it is. Either you gonna be honest or, like, the true sermon is gonna come out through somebody else. And with me, you always be honest with me. I'm not judging nobody. I'm gonna tell you such and such and how you should move and what you should do based off experience. If I ain't got no experience with it, I ain't got nothing to tell you. I'm just gonna tell you I'm gonna pray for you. And I hope God leads you to the path of righteousness. <laughs> Hallelujah, that's what I'm gonna do. But you know how that go, man. Boy, I, I'm telling you, when I my thoughts be wild as shit, man. Just like today, man, like, you go to try to do the right thing. I find, like, man, black people want so much, right? They want 
They want extra money on their taxes. They want extra money on their paycheck. They want you to cut taxes in half. They want you to like better their community. But these motherfuckers do so much shady shit, right? That you can never like, like to listen. That building we went to on the way home, that joint was supposed to be open to five. It is. Them people told me, man, we stopped at three thirty. But that's not what it says. But like you got, I could have sat there and, and like argued about it, but like it wouldn't, have, it would have wasted my, it would have wasted my time. Well, like, what am I gonna do? When you like got people just blatant in line, like, but you gonna probably sit in that joint for the next hour and collect that DC, that DC government money. But the moment they talk about car, uh, Congress talking about the government shutdown, everybody whining like, why me? You know what I mean? That's why like they, <laughs> that's why they laugh at us, dog. Like, cause we can't even do the most common shit right. Like, open and close on time. Smile. Stop like bringing your attitude to work and just do your job, right? Like, but folks be so upset and they be looking for so many uh, freebies and so many easy ways. Like, why those Caucasian people got like the billions and do all that? They still employ people that know how to do their job, so they can just work even easier. But like, you gotta put the work in first. Well, maybe yeah. we had a good old rant and spill, but with all that you said. Let's not negate. We appreciate the supporters that we do have. Yes. And the supporters that we don't have. Yes. So at the end of the day, it's a win-win. Yeah. And I just thought that we should do a giveaway. So, what we're going to do is give away some merch. What you need to do is like the last three episodes repost the last three episodes and tag MT underscore MTMJ fitness and we will reach out to the winner and get you your merch Thank you for listening to another episode of the MTMJ Fit Podcast. I am your motivator and your personal trainer. She is the wife. You can follow her at Sonya underscore Comfort Foods on Instagram. Get your food, get your catering, get your meal preps. She can do all that, right? Man, DM her all that. Uh, this is episode 72. <laughs>